Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmaso at the 1916company.com for purchase pricing and availability questions concerning this watch. Today we're discussing a 2022 launch from Omega. This is the Seamaster Boutique Edition, a timepiece that takes after the earliest Seamasters of the late 1940s and early to mid 50s, back when it was a water resistant all arounder, not specifically a dive watch, but something that could be a man's companion through almost every walk of life, from work to play, business and leisure, and this watch does take after those. As you can see, there's no rotating bezel, no outlandish depth rating, no helium escape valve. This is a water-resistant all-rounder in that fine mid-century Omega tradition. Now, it is beautifully made at 39.5 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel. You can see it's relatively thin as well, 12 millimeters thick, uncommon on modern Omega coaxials. It's 44.1 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. And you can see on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, I'm going to pull the strap a little bit tight here, so it's exaggerating the width of the watch, making it look bigger than it is. But this would wear nicely on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, particularly as the strap softens up and breaks in. You could see down the barrel on my wrist, the truest angle. The lugs are nowhere near the edge, even over the top, which exaggerates the width of the watch. You could see that that stiff strap is, is pulling my wrist tight, the edges of the case are actually nowhere near the edge of my wrist. And you can see that it will sit easily underneath the dress cuff if you want to wear it with long sleeves. We have here medium non-rectangular scale alligator leather, a deliberately different cut designed to look a little bit more dress oriented and perhaps a bit more eclectic and unusual as the cuts rarely seen on watch straps but alligator is the material for an upscale dress watch and so we have it here in semi-gloss black we have a monotone stitch and then actually what we've got here is a sort of folded edge so there's no cutting and lacquering this is a very handsome look we have a buckle that is omega branded in steel like the case and you can see on the reverse of the watch uh, we have a broad chapter ring featuring the iconography of Omega, and you can see some of those things like the coaxial escapement, the headquarters building, you could see the split second chronograph for the Olympics, you could see the observatory that was featured on the constellations back in the day and is featured on the back of the Globemaster to this day. You can see the little hippocampus, the symbol of water resistance on the Seamasters. Uh, you can find out all of these icons, including the footprint on the surface of the moon, the lunar lander, and the astronaut in his spacesuit during a extravehicular activity. But you can learn what all of those little metalized icons mean. But the case itself should be familiar. We have satin mid-case. We have a polished bezel. We have a polished bevel that runs from end to end and flares on the lugs. Liar style lugs. We've known them on Omega watches since the early 60s. So we have that inward bevel, but also the outward bevel. A bombe or dramatically cambered sapphire. And it is a sapphire. It's designed to look like a plexi, but it is scratch resistant sapphire. Here we have a crown, which is not a push down. You can see it's onion in form, a little bit vintage inspired with a media blast outside and a polished Omega logo. And then the dial, which is a wonderfully rich fume or smoke from bright burgundy, almost red in the center to dark at the edge. And you can see it too is cambered just like the crystal. It's glossy and gleaming and beautiful. And we have these little arced indices that sort of match the camber of the outer dial, which is a lovely look and an uncommon one on Omega watches. Now this is a non-loomed Seamaster. So you can see it is a little bit more dress oriented even than something like an Aquaterra. And you can see that the indices are polished and triple faceted in each instance. We have leaf or foy style hands at center, an applied Omega logo and marquee. We have a little date down at the bottom. Now, the watch uses the caliber 8800, which means we have hacking seconds. But then we've also got a quick set date system. If you want to change the date rapidly, you can do so quite easily. Silvered numeral on a black date disc. Turning it all over, you can see the 8800. Same movement used in the Seamaster Diver 300 meter. So automatic winding, single barrel, 55 hour power reserve, 35 joules. It's got hacking. It's got the quick set. 
It's got a master chronometer certification, which means it meets the COSC standards, but then goes beyond. Being tested for chronometry in six positions as a fully cased up watch, not a bare movement. The test also includes anti-magnetism, durability, winding efficiency, and power reserve master chronometer created with the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology, or known by its initials, master chronometer is the METAS standard. This is a higher standard, but an open one the tutor has started to use. It's standard for a better chronometer. It is tested as a fully assembled watch, not a bare movement. Now, it has a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance. Those two features primarily for shock resistance. I don't know how well you could see this, but there is another bridge below the balance bridge, and that one is for the coaxial escapement, which is now a tri-level design, so there's a drivetrain wheel and then two escape wheel planes. It's a direct and indirect impulse, double impulse system, whose primary advantage is that it is a tangential friction system, not one that is sliding friction. Lever escapements use sliding friction. This is more efficient, improving power reserve, improving chronometry, and reducing maintenance requirements. And of course, the great independent watchmaker George Daniels coined the idea, tying this watch to independent watchmaking at its best. There's also an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, balance balance staff, and escape. Now, only the hairspring is silicon, but all of those components are highly anti-magnetic, making this watch effectively a-magnetic. Now, it is a Seamaster, so you're probably wondering how water-resistant, since it doesn't obviously say on the case, it is 60 meters water-resistant, which apparently, according to Omega, is fine for surface swimming, as always with a non-screw-down crown on the 60-meter rating. I would say be a little bit circumspect about that. I'd say if you want to swim with it, get it water-tested before the aquatic season starts in the spring. If you love this watch, reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.